Hello everyone, and welcome back to Sonic Heroes for the GameCube! And after beating Team Sonic's story, we now move on to Team Dark. Which, I do have fun playing through, but some of the levels get really, really too long if you ask me. So let's just jump straight onto it with Team Dark and see what their whole story is compared to Team Sonic's. I'm counting on you guys! Hm. Affirmative. Sealing you in this room. And you, you can't remember anything, can you? Then it's settled. Now you two make up so we can start looking for Eggman together. Oh, yeah, baby, this makes us a team. So there you go, that's the whole story behind these two. Omega is mad for getting locked up in the room by Eggman, and Shadow, as per usual with his character, has amnesia and things. You two ready? Warning! Immediate destruction if distracted. <laughs> Hope you can keep up with me. I'm sure they can. If Knuckles and Tails can, then I'm pretty sure that Rouge and Omega are capable of doing so. But the difference with Team Dark compared to Team Sonic in uh, the levels is that this one is basically the expert mode, as I call it. Because each team, you know, has like different levels of difficulty, Team Rose being the easiest, I find. Whereas Team Dark is the hardest one out of them all, but I don't know what Super Hard mode is like, because uh, you have to collect all A ranks in the game to unlock that, including the extra missions and things. So uh, I don't really know, you know, if that's harder than Team Dark or anything like that, because I haven't really unlocked it yet, as I've, I've still got to get all the A-Ranks. Like, this is what I'm doing in my spare time. Even though I'm aiming for all A-Ranks in this LP for the normal story, in my spare time, I've still got to collect all those A-Ranks in general for every single mission in the game, because, I don't know, I'm just a completionist when it comes to that kind of thing. That and I like Sonic. There are an awful lot more enemies, though with Team Dark compared to Team Sonic and things. I mean, it makes sense given the fact that you've got a robot that can blow all sorts of stuff up, you know, a Dark Hedgehog and Rouge. <laughs> I, I do find that a bit of a different contrast here. You've got like this robot, a Dark Hedgehog, and just, just Rouge. <laughs> I don't even know what she's doing there, to be honest or so, but I suppose, you know, like, from episodes of like, Sonic X or something, um, Oh, damn it, I don't know, she's like a treasure hunter or so, so I suppose that makes some sort of sense. Also, I don't really know what the hell happened there. That's just an example or so where, you know, stuff like that can occasionally happen where... The game, yes. I think the level design is good, but the programming did need a bit of work, because some stuff was a bit silly when it happened to things. But, like I said, you know, with Team Sonic as well. There's nothing really in the game that makes me think, nah, that's it, this is, this is a bad game, I, I, I'm, I'm done. I, I never really get that feeling or so, compared to a lot of people, really. I guess I just have a guilty pleasure with this game, I guess? I don't know, either way I'm making an LP out of it, and that's that. Although, even though, you know, this one's a lot harder, it means that getting some of the A ranks are really, really pain in the ass. Particularly Ocean Palace when we get there and things. Oh my god. I, I swear, I, I had like 10 tries 
you know, 10 attempts or so just to get an A rank on that level because the score you need to get on that is ridiculous. Seaside Hill isn't so bad at this because the level's laid out nicely and things like that, you know, you just gotta go fast towards the end and just be defeat like a whole bunch of enemies along the, your way. But Ocean Palace is, uh, it's, it's just ridiculous what score you have to get for that. And that's the second level, you know. All the other levels do not have that score, which is such overkill and things, you know. Although honestly, level-wise, there's not really a lot to talk about particularly because it's the same thing, you know. We're going to be going through the same levels as Team Sonic, just a bit more difficult. If anything, Team Dark and all the other teams, you know, in the game, remind me of when you replay Spider-Man for the PS1, because, you know, Spider-Man for the PS1 stuff, you have easy, normal, and hard, but you also have kid mode. In this case, you know, Team Sonic is normal, and, um, Team Dark is hard, and Team Rose, I believe, is like the kid mode of things, which is cool, because, I mean, that's something that I like to do with Spider-Man, you know? I mean, when I first played it, I played it through kid mode because I was absolutely terrible at games as a kid. <laughs> um, then I went played through it through easy, then normal, then hard, you know, so it was just progressively. So, so I don't really re mind the whole replaying stages side of things, but I will admit, it would have been much better to include new stages in general, just to add a bit of uniqueness instead of just reusing assets or so from the same level. Perhaps they were, like, on a budget or so of this game? But I don't really know, because, I mean, obviously I didn't make this game, and I don't know too much to that side of things, but still. Well, so on that bit, you can actually use the uh, flight character in order to, you know, just get to the top of things, but I always like to do speed. <laughs> God damn it. I always like to use, like, the speed character, because, um, then... You basically have like this fun set piece bouncing between springs, and I don't know, I just like set pieces like that in Sonic games, really. There are some really, really cool set pieces, you know, when you go past loops and things, I find. Some Sonic games and stuff. I mean, you've got to say, you know, the first level of Sonic Adventure 2 was a really good set piece of just falling from the sky, and then just sort of technically skateboarding down the street on a broken bit of plane, you know. That bit was a cool set piece. I don't know, I just like moments like that in Sonic, to be honest. Oh, and by the way, I absolutely love Omega in this. Like, the dialogue that he says, although I'll go on that a bit later and so, because this is Team Blast. What happens here is when we use this, it freezes time for like a couple of seconds. You know, basically with Chaos Control. I'll go on about Omega though when I know it, that it's the right time and things. <laughs> God damn it. But uh, yeah, that was Seaside Hill, beaten in like uh, six minutes, and the A rank for this one is not so bad, I guess. I think you need at least 60,000 or 70,000 for an A rank. I'm not too sure what the score is particularly. You'll have to look it up. But um, I do know the score for Ocean Ballast is since I did so much experimentation, and I did not have fun with it at all. And that was for the second level, so that's a real shame right there. So here it is, Ocean Palace. Flee from the ancient ruins, and let's see how much more difficult it is. Ancient civilization established on the sea. This place is really beautiful. Primary target is Eggman. Don't forget it. <laughs> okay, that, that's just my example of why I absolutely love Omega. Like, you know, in Team Dark or so, because particularly... You know, all the characters are really serious, but all Omega really wants to destroy is just Eggman and things. But I just love the way, like, you know, the dialogue that he says makes you think that he's exactly a robot. Even though, like, I know he is a robot and things, obviously, but, you know, so let's just say... I just find it funny, because it, compared to everything else, you know, it's just such a contrast or so. Because, I mean, Omega would save strange things as well when defeating enemies. Like, one of them's just one where he goes, Worthless can sell my models. <laughs> things like that, you know. Particularly, one of the best things as well is... Uh, you probably already heard it, but you'll notice that when I attack or so with Omega, he goes, Anaya Charge. Really, what he's supposed to say is, Annihilation or so. But that's only if you press the B button once. So of course, when you just mash the B button constantly, he goes, Anaya charge, Anaya charge, Anaya charge, Anaya charge. <laughs> All the way and stuff, I don't know, I just find it pretty funny. <laughs> Given the fact that he doesn't have enough time to say Annihilation. Speaking of which, 
when it comes to cutting out lines, I've noticed that a lot with the GameCube version. That's one thing that I find the PS2 version does better, admittedly, even though I find the GameCube version better overall. Um, it's where, you know, the cutscenes, and they say stuff at the dialogue before they start the level. Some of them are just overlapped or so, because, you know, the game is running too fast at 60 frames per second that I don't have enough time to say anything. Especially the bit when we get to Hang Castle, and Omega doesn't even have time to say, like, two words of his sentence. I don't know, I just... Because, like, with the PS2 version and that, nothing feels overlapped, really, because given the fact that the PS2 version runs a lot slower, I guess, the lines <laughs> don't really have to be as rushed, really. It's like, you know, that cutscene on Sonic Adventure 2 with, um... What was it? I forgot the one, but you know the one where they're in, like, the spaceship or so, and Sonic goes, don't touch that lever? Is that one? Yeah, the lines just feel so overlapped in that bit, and it reminds me a lot of that with levels of amusement. Also, I don't know what the hell happened here or so, but uh, this just shows off how overpowered, you know, Team Dark can be. So I just used a, te a Team Blast, remember that. The, the meter is going down right now, okay? It's at this bar at the minute, and after I defeat these things... Oh look, I, I got another Team Blast or so, but just... Like, within a couple of seconds of things. I, d I don't get that, you know? I, all I did was just defeat, like, a couple of egg pawns, and then the Team Blast just fully replenished itself. And then I could use it again for some reason, which is, like, the strangest thing ever. And then when I just defeat these things, it just goes down normally. Although you can always use, like, the special glitch that I talked about at Team Sonic, I believe, where it press, um... What's it? B and Y at the same time when in flight mode. It glitches the... Thunder shoot, so that then, you know, the team blast just glitches out and it builds up like within three turns. It's a it's a pretty broken thing to be honest. But look, team blast again. I suppose you could technically say that you can just use as much bloody chaos control. Exactly, yeah, you can use as much bloody chaos control as you like in this because <laughs> It's useful for particularly getting good ranks or so, because when you use Chaos Control, it slows down time, and it actually freezes your timer, so in order to get an A rank. Getting an A rank in this level is a goddamn pain, so because the score you have to get is ridiculous. You want to know what it is, okay? So compared to Seaside Hill, it was 60,000, I think, or 70,000. This one, you need over 90,000 points. That's nearly 100,000 points on the second level. And the other ones don't even have that, you know. All you need is like 50,000, I think. But this one you need 90,000. It's ridiculous. So I can suggest, you know, to get in this A rank is follow the paths I am taking exactly. Because you've got to get a really high score to begin with, but then beat this stage in under like five minutes. It's absolutely insane. Because, you know, you basically have to do it faster than Team Sonic in general. It makes no sense. That's just bad design if you ask me. This is one level that I don't like to get the A rank on because it, you have to have such precision on everything. Your speed, your timing, and just your time overall throughout the whole level. And as you can see, even through all that, I just barely scraped it with 90,850 points. It is so blimmin' stressful trying to get that A rank. Like I said, I took like 10 tries in order to get it, and I was not having a fun time at all. Either way, let's go see Egghead. So, you're the ones who are playing games with my army. Primary target detected. Destroy Dr. Eggman. You must own me. Is that any way to treat your crown? Is your master's real power? <laughs> there you go, see what I mean? Eggman didn't even get to finish his line there and he already jumped onto our next one. Rather strange. But the tactic to this is the same as Team Sonic, and it's the same with every team really. The speed, home in attack, you know, the egg wall to begin with on the head a couple of times, then when you get to this bit, turn into the power type, and then just spam, 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 spam out of the B button because then you just drain its health down so fast. In fact, I believe Omega is even more powered than Knuckles, because look, he's already drained it down, and even like rotated in the full 360 degrees yet, you know? Knuckles was pretty much near the end, but Omega just completely drained its health with no issue at all. And there's the introduction of Team Dark, or so.
cruiser battleship destroy. <laughs> he says that on every single thing he defeats. It's pretty amusing. See you in episode nine.